With Kashin Koji becoming Boruto Sensei, we learn how he became the most powerful shinobi of all time. <laughs> There are several futures that should have happened, such as Naruto losing to Ishiki and dying, and then Kawaki killing Boruto and Sarada. This recontextualizes the entire flash forward scene from chapter 1, with Boruto claiming if this was truly the only outcome, as he must create his own fate to save the planet. This is because in every future, Boruto is meant to pass away with Kawaki being fed to the god tree. Chapter 5 team kicks off with Juro, no scoping Boruto from across the freaking map. My man has aimbot. And in one of the timelines, our MC was meant to perish in this very moment, with a second blast finishing the job. However, his fate alters due to Bug popping up to tell Jura that he is getting help. And that's how Boruto knew about the nature of Thorn Souls. This intrigues Jura, but also proves to be quite a challenge. As he mentions, it's like the heavens themselves are trying to keep the young lord alive. Even wondering if this is perhaps what they call divine intervention. Yep, you just said that right, ladies and gentlemen. Boruto is the honored one. Hold up. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Now, before you call this plot armor and some bullshit. It actually isn't. Remember in chapter 12, the only reason Jura intended to kill Boruto, who like Kawaki can serve as a sacrifice to the god tree, was due to the dangerous knowledge he possesses about Shinju. However, if there is someone else feeding Boruto the information, then that real threat is the person, as they could stop their evolution and desire for knowledge. So, it's a waste of good fodder for Jura to kill Boruto now. Hence, why he decides to spare it. This points towards Kashi and Koji being their next target, which seamlessly ties into the story perfectly. As just like Boruto being the star of hope, he is the star of change as Ishiki dubbed him. Someone that possesses a Shinjutsu power that is changing fate. It's a direct parallel to Jiraiya whom he's cloned from, as he too was changing fate by going up against pain, providing crucial information to Naruto who was the child of prophecy he nurtured to bring about prosperity to the world. Regardless of this, Jura and Bug must head back to the base with Hidairi's thorn salt before it rots away so they can bring him back to life. In the meantime, as Boruto begins to lose consciousness, he takes a trip down memory lane. We go back to the past, specifically one and a half years ago. It's events after Sasuke became a tree in chapter 4 as he lost to Ko. Boruto surrounded by Shinobi hunting him down. In spite of this, out of nowhere, a frog appears to help him. Koji explains how he surveyed the area, but doesn't believe there's a need for violence and for Boruto to kill 20 innocent shinobi who are ignorant of the truth. However, he offers a way out, and Boruto must trust him since he didn't snitch. Like, my man Koji is a G. From there, Kashin Koji uses a reverse summoning to bring Boruto to Orochimaru's hideout and safety. He used Genjutsu on the outside to make it invisible to anybody else. We learn his frogs aren't real and are scientific ninja tools, which he can control via his chakra. So bad news to all those theorists talking about Mount Baku and Great Sage Toad and all that shit and oh there's a contract. Remember all those theories about oh remember that Naruto episode? where they showed the contract and that's a, there's a name there we don't recognize that must be Koji. Goodbye those theories. Now these frogs also function like a walkie talkie as Koji can use them to talk through which of course we have seen Boruto do throughout to Blue Vortex. Nonetheless the young lord asks who the hell this stranger is and Koji reveals what remains of his mask to remind him. Koji first encountered Boruto in chapter 23 where he spared 
his life after showing him the karma as he was investigating it to find out a procedure to kill Otsuski. He wanted Boruto to meet up with Kawaki to see what resonance would do to gain more data. Currently, Kashin Koji's memories are informing him that Boruto is the one that fled from Kara and he assisted the escape. He's aware of omnipotence, but just like Sarada had informed in chapter 1, nobody ever recognizes that something isn't quite right. As over time, omnipotence will continually erase the truth and make them have no doubts about their altered memories. However, Kashin Koji unlocked a power that makes him feel different. Like, Literally, Kishimoto, he cooked peak fiction. Peak. Essentially, each Kara cyborg was made with the Atsuski god Shibai's DNA. Shibai harvested many planets in the past and mastered every Shinjutsu. Thus, Amada hoped that his cyborgs may be capable of adopting one of these Shinjutsu for themselves. Now, unlike Ninjutsu or Senjutsu, this power requires no hand seals to be performed and bring upon phenomena resembling the work of Kami. Amado considers ninjutsu as attempts at reproducing the effects of shinjutsu. For example, Code awakened his claw marks, Damon unlocked reflection, whilst Ada was given the uncontrollable omnipotence. Now, some weren't so lucky, like Boro and Delta as they never unlocked theirs, but whilst on his deathbed against Ishiki, Kashin Koji became enlightened and awakened his own. Bruh, I'm telling you, it gave him access to AnimeExplained.com to read the freaking leaks. He read the leaks, people. He read the entire manga in the future. But learning the future, Kashin Koji decided to run away and not die as a tool against Ishiki, which was initially his plan and he was ready for. His Shinjutsu is called 10 Directions. So, like pretty much everything in Naruto, this is inspired from Buddhism, where in Japanese, it's known as Jippo. This refers to all physical space in the universe, 10 directions being all 8 points on a compass plus up and down. In Buddhist texts, it is explained that he is everywhere in all directions, with three existences representing the past, present, and future. Kijimoto uses Used this concept and adapted it into Kashin Koji Shinjutsu power. Eventually, peering into the future, Kashin Koji knew that Naruto would unlock Baryan Mo. He knew Kawaki would kill Ishiki. Heck, this could even explain how Koji subconsciously knew his fate was linked to Konoha. You see, the timeline isn't linear. It's a battle royale of multiple possible futures, all fighting to become the real future. This isn't a multi verse or multiple Boruto and Naruto's existing in different worlds, it's one linear timeline that is changing constantly. Now, brother, brother, look, sister, you might not have the IQ or the reading comprehension to understand this. That's why you need to subscribe, hit the like button right now, and hit the notification bell. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you want to enjoy more peak fiction, watch this video learning the origin of kaiju number 8 and why it chose Kafka.